to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking, wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. Abba Yahweh, we do bless you for all things, your magnificent, wonderful name. We extolled you because you are so worthy to be praised. We thank you for life, breath, and strength, another opportunity to get our wicked hearts right in the midst of this wicked and perverse generation. I'll be the first to say I thank you for being long-suffering towards us. Thank you for being merciful and, and remembering your covenant that you made with Abraham. I thank you that you do it for your sakes. We humbly ask and request, Ruah, that you would speak to us your truth. Let these sins come in our hearts. Let there be a performance that would come from these words. Touch them that are yours, and every ones that are not, drive them away. We thank you, Father. We bless you for all things. We seek to be lights unto the nations. So help us to let this light so shine. In the mighty name of Yahshua, amen. Okay. Man, we got a whole bunch of them right here. We may not go through all these bunch. Y'all may be seated, Israel. There's a whole bunch of them in here. You know what? Hmm? Do I? You like letters? Yeah, you can't keep it low. There's something else on over here. Did they cut this? Let me cut this thing off. Yeah, okay, go ahead and read. So, say, let me. Shalom, Pastor Dow. My name is, I'm a Hebrew Israelite sister. I've been watching you and listening to your teachings on YouTube off and on for the past two and a half years. I actually ended up listening to too many teachers. I got very confused about the father's name. Then I noticed that most of the teachers said his name is Yahuwah or Yahuwah. They're pronounced the same but spelled differently. At the time, I did not know exactly what you call the father. I just wanted to keep the Torah and live a righteous life. I'd gone from Christian to Herbert W. Armstrong teachings, which is Sabbath keeping, back to Christianity, to Catholic, to Seventh Day Adventist, back to Christianity, to Mormon, to Messianic, to Hebrew Israelite. That is, that is a state of confusion, isn't it? And, and, I, and I do not mean to be harsh. That's not my intent. But some of you just ain't going to learn. I'm going to tell you the reason why you hop around like that. The reason why you hop around like that is because you're looking for somebody to say something that you agree with. Yeah, it is. All right. yeah, it is. It's the truth. And truth cannot be truth until you accept it. Mm -hmm. That's why we're in a state of confusion. That is confusion. Yes, it is too. And y'all is not the author of what? Confusion. That is exactly what that is. Because if somebody says something over here you don't like, or let's say somebody, this is what we're dealing with in this generation. We're dealing with an age of knowledge. And everybody's looking for something exclusive. So they look for that one thing that sounds different than everybody else, and we throw away all the other things that have been true for some so-called one little thing of truth. We know nothing about their character. We know nothing about their teachings. And the reason why we do that is because our heart is deceitful. Truth is just not readily accepted. And truth is perished in the land. I don't know what kind of salvation some of you folks had. That's probably the first place we need to start. But some of you haven't had a, the, the right experience with salvation. I'm not going to go over this for a long period of time at all, but my first experience with salvation, it was a wreck. 
And I can get pretty ugly when I'm crying and snotting. And, you know, that's because I, for the first time in my life, realized my sin condition. And there was no, there was no jumping, no screaming, no hollering, no shouting, no giving y'all glory, no nothing. I was begging for my life. Up until then, on my way to the lake. But once it got revealed to me, my condition, seeing it through the lenses of his eyes, it was a horrible thing to see. I mean a horrible thing. It wasn't until in that moment of time that I had gotten filled with the Ruha HaKadosh or the Holy Spirit, then joy came. But until then, it was very painful. I mean painful experience. I'm talking about 30 to 45 minutes or nothing but just wailing. And all this, because it, it just all of a sudden just hit me, came over me. And I was in the assembly, about 150, 200 people, but nobody didn't know me. It was personal between me and y'all. If I had any dignity, it left that day. Because there was nothing dignified about it. It was ugly. You thought I was literally gone mad. But today, you know, we got these, uh, 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 Father, I'm so sorry for my sins. Please come into my life. Hallelujah. I'm saved. And that's the reason why you keep having problems with these folks. Because they have never really truly had an experience with the Father. Look at our people on Mount Sinai. Everybody thought they wanted to hear the Father. Don't you think you want to hear the Father today too? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. War unto you that desire the day of Yahweh. He came down on Mount Sinai in a thick cloud of darkness. And the day of Yahweh was a day of darkness and gloominess. I mean, even his people, even his people were terrified. And we so arrogantly, I can't wait for Jesus to come. You better. Did I just say something wrong? Is that not our condition? That's like a lot of you stupid ass people out there keep calling the devil stupid and dumb and ignorant. Have I not taught y'all have respect for your enemies? That's the reason why he whooping your ass because you ain't got no respect for him. So when he's, when he's tearing your life up, turning it upside down, and your enemy is causing all this calamity in your life, you have no idea what is going on because he's not using a sword or a gun. No, he's not. Or a bow and arrow. But he is wreaking havoc on your life. So how stupid is he then? How about you the one that's stupid? The Bible says he was full of wisdom. And you full of <laughs> Because you have no respect for your enemy, your enemy is always taking advantage of you. Because you do not know the art of war. You better learn how to respect your enemy. I didn't say love him. I said you better learn how to respect him. Because this, this, this devil who you think is so dumb and stupid ain't so stupid after all. We better get that. Why y'all think I tell you? I know, I, I know how the mind think. I keep telling y'all, don't eat off other tables. Do I tell y'all that because I want y'all to stay in the confusion? You may come to something before we do. You, you might do that. But you still got to wait on everybody else. And we may never come to your truth. Okay, are y'all all right with that? We may never see things your way. Can you be content? The most high, bless his holy name. I tell you, he's doing everything he can to preserve his remnant. But we have got to want to be preserved. Go ahead, Sister Ashley. 
As you can see, I've been searching for the truth for a long, no, you long, ain't. long time. You've been searching time. for agreement. You've been searching for your truth. If you have ever heard me, the search is over with. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes it is. Most of y'all don't know Bishop Banks. We used to have an old, old man come by here and preach by the name of Bishop Banks. And at that time, he was 74, 75 years old. He'd give any 30-year-old a run for his money on any given day. He's calling himself, I'm an old oak. He said, ain't nobody going to bring me down but God. That's how he said it, too. And when you watched him, you believed his testimony, too. Yes, sir, you did, too. I don't care who you are, you, you, you believe this testimony. That old man will work you to death. He did, and can preach too. And most of y'all, y'all couldn't handle his preaching. No, no, when Mr. Banks got to preach, people start running to the doors. Or they sunk down in their seat. Yes, sir. He said, this place is the last stop before the lake. That's right. He did too. He said, I've been preaching a long time. And I said, I know a righteous man when I see one. I didn't ask him to say all that. Mm -hmm. But remember, y'all bought you here. I didn't bring you here. And, and we're not going to toy around with your feelings and emotions who you, don't, you can't even make sense of. There it is. Scripture says, buy the truth and do what? Yes, you better keep it. Yes, Hallelujah. And guard your heart. Read on, Sister Ashley. Now, I'm with this group of Hebrew Israelites who lack the fruit of the Spirit. They make jokes about speaking in tongues and praising the Most High in the dance. I'm not trying to tear them down. I just need someone to pray for me and my family who really gets answers to prayers. I've been suffering with high blood pressure, and I can't seem to get it down. Right now, it's 183 over 97. It is way too high. My normal blood pressure is 110 over 70. My husband's diabetes has been up and down. He has been in and out of the hospital four times with, in, within this year. My youngest daughter has been diagnosed as a schizophrenic. My youngest son is underweight, and people think, not doctors, that he has ADHD. Time autism. out. Is the devil so dumb now? No, sir. Are y'all folks hearing me? Yes, sir. The dumb devil. Who comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy? Yes, sir. The thief does. Is that right? Is, is he so dumb now? No, sir. Huh? Most of everybody else can't equate that to the work of the devil. True. Read, that, read that again. My husband's diabetes has been up and down. He's been in and out of the hospital four times within this year. My youngest daughter has been diagnosed as a schizophrenic. My youngest son is underweight and people think, not doctors, that he has ADHD, autism, or ADD. I hope they don't take that as being offensive, but that is a habitation of devils. Uh-oh. You're not going to go to the Messianics because they ain't got no deliverance for you. You're not going to go to Hebrew Israelites because they're going to cuss you out. You're not going to Christianity because they, they got the same condition. So the devil ain't so stupid then, is he? No, sir. Look like he went in somebody war in the family. Yes. He formal before then, isn't he? Yes. You know he don't care if you call him stupid? No, Why he's wrecking your soul? Come on, sister. It seems like people are always making judgments about me before they even get to know me. Ever since we got with this group, I've been told to leave my husband. He's half Italian, half Japanese. I'm black. I'm a Hebrew Israelite. My husband is very disoriented, which causes him to make unwise decisions. We struggle a lot because of this. These people hate white people, and they believe that Esau was red, like the white man. Our leader has helped us. Oh, oh. Y'all, I, I have read every one of these letters, but I have so many of them that when I hear them, I have to refresh my memory. Do you understand this? Are y'all hearing this? Yes. Elder Donna, you hearing this? This is a mess. It is. What did they? What did she say about Esau? These people hate white people, and they believe that Esau was red like the white man. <laughs> Damn. 
Some things just ain't even worth entertaining, though. You know what I mean? Huh? Does anybody in here besides me know what the name Esau means? I'll go ahead and give it to you. Elder Doug does. The name Esau means Harry. Did I just say something wrong? The name Esau means Harry. There's not one person on the face of planet Earth that can show you from the Bible that Esau was white. <clears throat> uh oh. You know, if I Bible it, I can believe it. Well, if I believe it, I can Bible it. They ain't got me confused. <clears throat> Spirit of confusion me and loosed. <clears throat> Read about Esau again. These people hate white people and they believe that Esau was red, like the white man. Esau's your brother. Uh oh. The word red, when you read it in the Bible, means ruddy. In the Hebrew, it's called Adomim. Not Adumo Adimia. Are y'all listening to me? Yes, Same color that King David was. True, true. Yes, Same color Solomon was. True. Now, was David a white man? Yes, sir. But he was ruddy. Yes, sir. Well, which one is it then? <laughs> was Solomon white? No, but he was ruddy. I cannot believe how people can just bite off on this Esau the white man stuff. I'm telling you, Esau is just like Israel today, a mutt. That's one word can cover it all, couldn't it? A literal mutt. And the only way you're going to be able to know people, you're going to have to watch them. You're going to know them by their fruits. The word white in the scriptures is the word Laban or Laban or Laban. And go check me out with the base concordance of strong. It's the, it's the elementary, the entry point of trying to define Hebraic words. Have I said anything wrong yet? I don't think I'm going to either. But this is what happens. This is a result when you go out and start eating off other people's tables. Yes. I don't care. What is it? Timotheus' father was a Greek. I don't give a damn if he's a black Greek, red Greek, yellow Greek, blue Greek, or purple Greek. He was still a what? Greek. And he was married to a Yehudi. And if we follow the order of scripture, we're not to we're charged to not mix with other Amen. nations. Isn't that right? Yet Abraham mixed with a Hamite. Isn't that so true? True. Moses had a had a Hamite. Yep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep. That's right. Yourself married a Hamite. That's right. true. <laughs> so what is this strange and foreign doctrine that everybody comes up with? Oh, I know you're all out there listening too. Y'all see my, um, what was that biblical Israelite series? It was that number 11 that caused the fire storm. Yes, sir. Boy, that thing is done blew over everybody. <laughs> I got called all kind of names. <laughs> y'all know what? Y'all ever heard of a man by the name of Malcolm X? Yes, sir. What color was he? Black. He was black, but what did they call him? <clears throat> they called him red. Well, is, is Malcolm X white because he red? <laughs> they just called my dad Big Red. Because my dad like 6'4 and he's big. Sir. So that means Malcolm X, David, Solomon, Adam, 
Esau all have something in common. And dad thou. They're ruddy. You people are fools. You people, I'm serious. You just this stuff you cannot make up. You cannot. And and you know, if you would think if somebody has the spirit of truth, you would recognize it. And the reason why you hop around all these other places is because you cannot recognize the spirit of truth unless you have the spirit of truth. I'm not trying to be offensive, Sister Ashley. But Esau ain't the white man. Are there Edomites that are white? Yes. Are there Edomites that are black? Yes. Are there Edomites that are brown? Yes. Uh, I was looking in the scriptures Bible today and I seen the word race. I go, you know these books didn't translate that right either. I said, you know what I say, man. I, I said, Father, I, I said, what is going on? A, a, am I getting to the point that I need to find me a mountainside somewhere and just be by myself? Is this making any sense? I mean, I understand Elijah. I only am a pastor of Yahweh. Now, I know better than that because we have Rahach in the ministries that are pastors themselves. But I tell you what, it sure does feel lonely at times. How can you preserve the remnant of Israel when they are always looking to go into other fields and other pastures? And they want to go eat that mess and then come home and have a bowel movement. Come on, Sister Ashley. Our leader has helped us out when we ran out of money and did not have any place to live. He let us stay in his apartment for three months because he was never there. We only had to pay him $300 a month. We're very grateful to him, and after that, he told me to leave my husband. And he said that if anything went wrong, that my son and I could stay at his apartment. Uh, let me tell you something. In the book, there is examples of, of a woman leaving the husband. Sir. You don't ever hear about it. Because it's an unpopular thing to talk about. Because we've been so indoctrinated, a wife can't leave a husband. That's providing he's a husband. Why, why do you think double ring 24 is in place? Believe it or not, men, that's there for the protection of a woman. That's what the provision is all about. To protect her against abuses. Injustices. Well, I'm talking to a generation that don't even know Torah, though. I mean, after all, New Two Torah says you women can put a Christmas tree up in the house, and your husband is supposed to be able to, to say hallelujah and endure you. See, I, I can understand why Jesus said you're going to be hated of all men. You heard me last night, right? I said, man, before all this, I was a very likable guy. Life of the party. I'm, I'm serious. I used to, man, I used to, everywhere I went, I went into the club. The club didn't start hopping until I got there. It's like a spirit was with me or something. I used to show up late, too, man. I tried to come in at like 1130, man. As soon as I walked through the door, ah! Just a hula. I kid you not. Hey, I was a likable guy. And then, all of a sudden, he called me to preach. Now I understand what it means to be hated. I mean hated too. Y'all hear that guy on that phone call? Why ain't you answer the phone? What you doing working on the Sabbath? You supposed to be in the temple praying. Well, damn it, how can I answer the phone then? <laughs> Elias, he'll tell you that we get messages like that all the time. <laughs> and I said, if that if that's sanity, we all finished. We're done for in this world. If that that you know how that guy believed that he was one hundred percent right? And there ain't nothing you can say that's gonna persuade his mind. He believes he's right, just like a lot of people out there. They believe they're right. We're in trouble. Some of you can get a spirit like that. What can we do about it? <laughs> 
Some of you do have a spirit like that. This is a heart-wrenching letter right here. This is, is a very painful experience to show you exactly what happens. Come on, Sister Ashley. After that, he told me to leave my husband, and he said that if anything went wrong, that my son and I could stay at his apartment. Yeah, I wonder why. Yeah, I wonder why. Huh? Yeah, I wonder why. Hmm? At least this one got a little bit more integrity than the situation we had to deal with with dog collars. And then telling women to uh, get rid of your children before you get married to me. I mean, you got bad works. Which one's the worst? Which one's the baddest? Both of them are messed up in the head. And women just as messed up. And by the way, let me tell you women something you might don't know. All right? You are actually only charged in the scriptures to wing your children up to two years old. Yes, After that, it's up to the man to raise them, especially if he's a boy. Yes, oh, boy. Yes, oh, boy. Now they want to crucify, pass down, dude. Now they want to jump ship and go to Christianity. <laughs> Don't they? Who? <Ooh>, I'll stop. <laughs> Come on, Sister Dash. I'll stop. Some things, it's better just not say it right now. Right now, because we, we, what did they say? It's hard for me to tell you because you're dull of hearing. Yes, sir. You heard so much. Yeah, that's what the Apostle Saul said. All right, sir, it's Ain't not, it's not that I'm not telling you the truth, it's that, that you're. Are y'all tired already? Are y'all listening? Are y'all learning anything? Come on, Sister Ash. Maybe you'll get finished with this letter one day. He said that it would help me, but not my husband, because he felt like he would be taking care of a grown man, because my husband makes too many unwise decisions. I never told my husband about this, because he already felt like he was not welcomed or fitted in with that group. No, you're not, especially if you, what is he, Chinese? Half Japanese, half, half Italian. Japanese, half Italian. What was Cornelius? Cornelius wouldn't even be welcome in this, this generation, in both of these camps today. Cornelius could walk right down Fifth Avenue or 121st Street, right there in New York, and get cussed out. We got something for that today, too. No, we're going to continue on with the Holy Spirit a little bit more. Read on. My husband believes that the black people of America who are descendants of the blacks who came through from the slave trade are the true Israelite people. Hold on a second. I see it's hard. I'm sorry, Saints, but it is hard. Let's go back to the beginning. Yahweh did not choose Israel because they were black. They just so happened to be black. And what you're dealing with today is another gospel. Just like these sacred name people. They try to tell you that you can't be saved unless you say the name their way. Now, ancient Hebrew is a dead language. Did y'all hear what I said? Dead language. It's a dead language. Literally. There's nobody on earth today that can pronounce his name right. All we can do is do our due diligence, do the best we can. But Abraham didn't know him by his name, Yahweh. No truth. Manoah didn't either. Moshe asked, he says, I am Elia, Ishaelia. But by my name, Yahweh, it's, it's amazing. It is utterly amazing. Now, is his name in the book? All over the place. But Abraham was the father of faith and never knew him by his name, Yahweh, or Yahuwah. Or Yahshua. Or Yahawasha. Pick one. I got some news for you. Abraham became a friend of Yah because he was obedient. Uh oh. So, what good is it for you to be able to twist your tongue one way and still not obedient? 
I'm, not, I'm trying to help. I'm trying my best to help y'all preserve y'all life. And so I thought that is my calling. It really truly is. So he didn't choose Israel because they were black. The Canaanites was black. The Hittites were black. The Jebusites, the Amorites, the Moabites, the Babylonians, the Persians, the Assyrians. Now, you know what? We got something that we got to figure out then. Since the name Laban means white, and that was Rachel's father, how did he get white? I got the answer. Y'all want to hear the answer? Because white, you cannot produce color from. But if a, if a man is color, you can produce white. That's scientifically, that's scientifically proven. They didn't run around looking at people. What's your nationality? If that was the case, Abraham would have never married a Hamite. Or Moshe, custodian of the law. Did he not marry a Cushite woman, yes or no? So why is it that Yahweh called them three to the door of the tabernacle? Moshe, Haran, and Miriam. You three come on up here. I'd already been hurting. Just by hearing it. And he's making his address to two of them. But one of them got smitten with what? That's telling me who the instigator was. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, Jacob's name, skipping thought, means Sir Planner. Is that right? Most of us, we would believe that Jacob is a deceiver. Were we not? Some of us, we think that Jacob is a deceiver. I say Esau is the deceiver. Jacob got the birthright fair and square. Hey, give me your birthright. Oh, it don't mean nothing to me here. Take that and give me the red pottage. Jacob had more respect for the birthright than Esau did. And yet we've been conditioned Esau is the deceiver. Esau is the trickster. I mean, Jacob is the deceiver. Jacob is the trickster. Jacob is the hoaxster. Yeah, yeah. Now wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait one minute. Esau was already in a bad condition in his mind anyway. He was. Because he put such a cheap value on the birthright. Yeah, Are you following? Yeah. Could you not blame right. Jacob's mother for dressing up Jacob yeah. and telling him, go in there and get the blessing? Because you do better by the blessing than Esau would. He put no value on the birthright. You put more stock in the, in the birthright than he does. Son, go put some, put some hair on you and put some, put some bass in your voice. Go out there and roll around in a dirt and smell. Run around for a while. Start sweating so you can smell like Esau. Go get it because you'll do better by Look at y'all looking. See what you did. I, 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 I talk your American mind again. You're finished. It finished. You find a hard time to bend it in it. Yeah. Esau was the one to deceive him because why come when he went in with his father that he didn't disclose to him that I sold my birthright to Jacob? No, he still wanted to bless him. His father would have said, wait a minute, why are you worried about the blessing since you sold your birthright? But that's not recorded in the manuscripts now, is it? Uh, is it? Uh, it's not in the manuscripts. Uh, wow. So now who the deceiver? See, Christianity has screwed you up. Uh, Everybody done told you up. Uh, Just like you thought that yourself was sold into slavery. <laughs> by his brother. See, got to have preacher. You got to have preacher. Imagine what Esau would have done with the blessing. But I've got some news for you. 
Jacob did bless Esau close to the same blessing that he blessed Jacob with. I mean, Isaac did. Isaac blessed Esau with the, almost the same blessing. Fatness on the earth, dude. Esau was mad, I'm going to kill you. Y'all remember when Esau showed up with about 400 men? What did Jacob do? He's a warrior, wasn't he? Put all the women and children up front and let me hide behind him. I mean, if Esau's a manly man, and you know you don't stand a chance. He, maybe, hey, maybe he, he won't even slaughter them. Maybe he got a little bit of mercy in him. But believe it or not, Jacob and Esau got along just fine. And Esau went and returned to Mount Seir. Anyway, you people out there worried about color. I'm telling you right now, a lot of these people who are preaching to you on these streets are Edomites. You know how I know that? Huh? Do y'all know how I know that? Because Esau was a Hebrew. Do they not claim to be Hebrews? And do they not forbid people to come to the kingdom? Yes. Come on, sister Ash. We ain't going to read all these letters. There ain't no way. Look at it. Time already is getting away. You read too slow. My husband just wants to be accepted because he wants to be a part of the Israelites too. Sorry to have shared so much. We've been through so much. We just need some real answering prayers to go you up for us. You people give these people too much power and strength though. By setting up and listening to them and, and, and then as if you have to be accepted with them. Really? You go squabbling and gobbling at their feet. For, no, for what? Misery? To get told you're a devil? Some of us just love abuse. Come on, sister. Dad. We need some healing and some real deliverance. I say it. Please pray for us. Shalom, shalom. You need to learn how to repent first. Truth. All right, let's go on next. Shalom, Pastor. May the Most High Yah continue to ordain and embolden your utterance as you feed his sheep with knowledge and understanding. Do y'all, are y'all insulted by being called sheep? No. I mean, I'm a sheep in this pastor, but by the Father's definition, I'm not a sheep. You know that's the reason why there's a hook on here, don't you? Yes, sir. And you know what? This staff is not only for this hook, right? Yes, sir. This staff is also to break your leg, yes, to keep you from venturing out into other pastures too as well. Yes, I know now you're going to call me militant. I don't understand. I just want to hit somebody. I've never hit anybody. <laughs> with, I've never hit anybody with this staff. Never. Because I know you got the Roman government on your side. You're going to go to Caesar. <laughs> I've included my offering with this letter. This is and will be my last long letter. I plan to cut the length of future letters by half. I feel like I'm talking too much just in a different format. Oh, th this letter comes to us. From our lawyer, attorney. So that means they're already smarter than all of us. At least intellectually. I said at least intellectually. Don't take it personally down. Don't go off into a state of depression. You just got to go to school for a long time. Come on. Thank you for indulging me by reading my letters. You're welcome. I've been studying the legal and social science scholarship on polygyny. I read an article, quote, everything lawyers know about poly polygyny is wrong, no, it's end nothing. quote. The author did an excellent job tracing the history of the government using polygyny as a pretext to wage war against the Mormon church. Didn't I tell y'all that? Didn't I tell y'all that? 
Come on. A U.S. court opinion described polygyny as barbaric, Asiatic, and African. Then what is this culture we living in today? Then I mean, I mean, really, what is this culture? Is to, what is this culture today? I mean, what is the opposite of a barbarian? Civil, and I suppose we live in a civil country. You got the devil that's running the asylum. Trying to define for us what's civil and what's righteous and what's not. And some of you on the side of the devil. It's amazing, isn't it? The audacity of these people to think that they can sit up there and, and call a biblical practice, what do they call it? Barbaric, Asiatic, and African, implying that it's beneath white Americans. Oh! Oh, it's beneath you white folks. <laughs> beneath you white folks. <laughs> That's beneath us. <laughs> I got news for you. There's more white polygynous families in America than there is any other culture. I wonder if it's Paul Bear now. <laughs> Now we're talking to somebody who, here who's doing some due diligence here. Yes. Come on. The author briefly wrote that monogamy was used to reduce the number of a man's heirs. Say that again. The author briefly wrote that monogam monogamy sorry, was used to reduce the number of a man's heirs. You know the reason why? Do y'all know the reason why? Yes, I'm going to tell you the reason why. Because the state got his hands out for your inheritance. Yes. And they locked you down with the marriage license. Yeah, right, right. you got that right. And you think you do your, you think you've done your little uh, contr contribution to society when you have what is called a model American family. You know, a son and a daughter. All you did was replace your ass when it's dead. You ain't added nothing to it. Let's tell the truth. The, the federal government was mad and upset because the Mormons had took over Utah. True. And they were seeking the presidency. Yeah, they were. Right? Yeah, they were. Yes, they were too. And so they rolled out the National Guard and forced them to stop polygyny. That they call polygamy. I don't agree with the word polygamy. Polygyny. Are you following? Sir. See, that's the truth. But where is it at? <laughs> you know what I'm doing, don't you? <laughs> this is another one of them subjects people don't like talking about. Y'all notice that if it's truth, I'm going straight after it. I like testing the hearts of people. I like to see if you do have the spirit of truth in you. Read on. Y'all love these letters, don't you? Y'all love these letters better than the sermon. <laughs> This purposefully increased the likelihood of property sheeting. a sheeting to the Roman church because a man had no heir to inherit his property. Yeah, because everybody's trying to acquiesce to the Roman church in everything that we do in life. In everything that we do in life. I ain't. How many times y'all even make declarations? I hate this country. I hate the religions of this country. I'm full of hate. <laughs> Come on. It follows that with polygyny outlawed, universal monogamy was and continues to be a built-in population and wealth control mechanism in favor of the ruling authority. Mind you, this is coming from an attorney that, that has the spirit of truth. Come on. This is what I've woken up to. Strict monogamy laws are deliberate war tactics. Universal monogamy decreases the number of children. Contrary to our culture, our Western minds have been conditioned to believe that we want small families. Man, we need, we need to get this attorney to write a book. And then I can put me a little paragraph in there, approved by Pastor Dow. New York Times. <laughs> if a married woman has a boy and a girl, then she's, quote, done her duty. In reality, she's only met the replacement rate. She had two children to replace she and her husband in the population. 
Israel didn't go into Egypt with 70 people and come out with millions just by replacing themselves. The, quote, powers that be are definitely dealing wisely with us just like they did the Egyptians. They're dealing what with us? Wisely. Do you understand what that means? Yeah, sir. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, that means you're a bunch of fools. Yeah, I'm just going to break it down. <laughs> Cut through the red chase. You're a bunch of fools. Come on. Because of that article, I'm doing more in-depth biblical and secular research on polygyny. I've heard two anti-polygyny arguments that I'm sure you're familiar with. Levites and overseers can't, quote, some say couldn't, have more than one wife. No one mentions that Moses was a Levite and three wives who are mentioned throughout Torah. And the book of Judges, Elkanah, Samuel's father, had two wives. He was a Levite, according to the genealogy well, in Second Chronicles 6. Y'all better, better leave this attorney alone. You ain't ready. Because this one has went in. This one said, man, I am gonna, I'm going I'm to get to the bottom of this everywhere. I've talked to this attorney. This attorney is, is not even interested in, in polygyny. Neither are they against it either. So, but they're actually doing something that you people won't do. So you love to sit back in your little fence and foam out your sorry feelings. Ah, acting like chickens. <laughs> Tearing up every damn thing. And here's an intelligent person right here is putting their education to use. Yes, They're just not swallowing hook, line, and sinker everything that Pastor Dow says. Yes, They're being like the yes, And there ain't nothing you can say against it either. Yes, As if your offense and your judgment mean something. True. You see what's happening? This whole covenant is built on marriage. It's the greatest covenant that Yah was ever made with his people but the least understood. That's the reason why we prostitute ourselves and whore ourselves around to every God. Every old little emotion that we can't make sense of and everything. It, we, we, we will turn around. What's that word? Slander? Diabolus? And that's something we'll do that. In other words, we will forget about our name being written down just so we can give place to the devil and slander. Yes, sir. Let's show you how cheap of a value we have on our salvation, our very soul. Yes, we'll step outside of this covenant in a minute because we don't have a little respect for it. And wait a minute, wife, you're supposed to be keeping your mouth under control. Yes, Uh-oh. Yeah, assembly. Men, the way that you expect for these women, your sisters, to get into their role and obey this book. How about you first lead by an example? Because the father's married to us. Mm -mm -mm. It's the straight way true, Brother Victor. The straight way true. Come on. Because of Samuel's temple service, I believe that Elkanah's label as an Ephraimite in 1 Samuel 1 refers to his dwelling place and not his tribal ancestry. Dr. William Luck's view on, quote, husband of one wife in 1 Timothy 3 is interesting. He doesn't use the one versus first arguments to sum up his position. Greece was a monogamous society. Paul, writing to Israelites under Greek rule mandating monogamy, would have been pointless. Paul didn't make a brand new... Now that is a very educated statement right there. Which it would probably went right past some of y'all's head. He didn't sit there and write a renewed covenant to regulate monolygamy. That was the wicked society they were in even though they had a boy lover. And a few girlfriends and a couple of temple of prostitutes. And it was just monolygamy on paper. But actually, he was regulating. Listen to this. Watch this. Paul writing to Israelites under Greek rule, mandating monogamy would have been pointless. Y'all hear that? Yes, yeah, pointless because our culture was polygyny. I even found a quote in Josephus saying the same thing. Yep, yep, told it. Yep, yep, yep. Old Pastor Dow, y'all forbid has been studying. Shucks. Most people don't, don't, don't know what that husband or one wife, they don't know what that word means. No idea. Brother Mike in Ohio figured it out. 
He turned around and sent me a long email about like that. And I, I said, you got it. So I'm trying to save some of this stuff. Remember the other night I said, I said uh, especially that them um, boot licking lies over at 119. First of all, there's no way in hell I follow them to nothing. Them soft spoken faggots. They worse than, they got the same spirit as, a, as Obama got reading them teleprompters. That is not a Hebrew, that is not our nature. You understand? Our nature is passionate by nature. Brother Shane, come here for a second. I, I, I'm serious. And, and then, of course, this culture has been trained to treat us as if we're out of control. Yeah, yeah because we're so passionate. Now, as you give, give up, Brother Shane, that mic for a second. There's this book, was it written by Thierry who? The one we're talking about, the, the one that came from, um, uh, the book that we're talking about with the, the nature of the Hebrews. Yes, it's uh, Hebrew thought compared to Greek. All right, Hebrew thought compared to Greek. Now what he's going to do is, is I'm, I'm going out on a limb right here because I don't know how much he read of the book. <laughs> so I'm just hoping that he don't make me look like an ass. <laughs> All right, but he is, com but he comparing, this book compares Hebrew thought to Greek thought. Okay, I have a book on my shelf. I hadn't read it yet. Now I've got a whole bunch of books on my shelf. I read one page. Somebody said, you read the book? I said, yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but Hebrew thought compared to Greek thought, tell us the difference in, in nature. Like, like you said, passionate, lively. Hebrew thought was very explainative. It had substance and depth to it, whereas Greek thought was just plain, simple, nothing to it. It is it, it just lifeless. It, it really had nothing to uh, any good degree to it, very passive, whereas Hebrew thought and Hebrew mindset was very active. What about the difference in the natures of people? In the same way, the nature of the people, you know, as you know, it said in Egypt that the women in Goshen were more lively than the women in Egypt. It was pretty much saying that the, the Hebrew culture and the Hebrew life, they were very passionate in everything they did. They put their whole substance into it, whereas the Greeks and, and, and so what be in the same mindset were, again, passive, lifeless, and just, you know, just barely existing. Does that, does that not sound like American culture, though? Yes, sir. Try to suppress the fire that's in you. Thank you, Brother Shane. Isn't that true? That's good teaching. Come on, Sister Ashley. Paul didn't make a brand new prohibition against polygyny in the leadership or discuss polygyny at all. Hold on, time out. Did y'all know that, that Joseph, yourself, was a man married to more than one wife? Yeah. No, nah, look at him. Well, I got you now, don't I? Look, look at him. You think I can rock you, bro, Scott? Or would you beam me? <laughs> yeah, y'all got something to, hey, check me out now. Y'all really got something now, don't you? Yeah, I'm saying yourself, the husband of Mary. Had more than one wife. Of course. Yeah. Remember my last night I made a statement. I said, I'll, I'll, I'll take you on just in the New Testament. We ain't got to go David, Moses, none of that. Rip you to shreds. Tear you apart. Y'all notice, you know, if you take a wet dog and you take a stick and you smack it, I say wet. You know that thing stings and hurts extra hard? Extra bad. And that's what's happening with a lot of these people who have made judgments against me because they can't back up their doctrine. Yes, sir. Right. So every time I talk, I'm and the water splatting off of them. I'm putting weps on them. Come on. He, Paul, wrote against it as one social science scholar on medieval Rome says, marrying monogamously but mating polygynously. Oh. That makes sense. Yeah. Read on. Overseers were to literally be, quote, one woman man, as there weren't Greek words for husband or wife. Y'all hear that? Yes, sir. Did y'all hear that? Yes, sir. 
Do we, do we need to break that down too? Yes, sir. Come on. Then a reading of 1 Timothy 3 would have been understood as a prohibition against overseers committing fornication and adultery. Those things were common in Greek culture, not polygyny. When I have more time, I'll research Dr. Luck's position. I also want to buy his book called On the Mortality of Biblical Polygyny. And I believe that this is going to really get to the bottom of it. Hello, Pastor. My name is, and I'm just coming to the truth of what the word of Yah has to say about blacks. Ooh. I'm an African-American, 23-year-old. I didn't know the word said anything about blacks. Does the word only talk about blacks? I mean, thus said the Lord, Yah was saving only black Israel. The white man's the devil, the black man is Yah's creation. You got to be black in order to be saved. Jeez. I'm an African American 23 year old girl. I'm contacting you because I found your site when researching more truth. I feel alone in knowing so much of the truth that the Bible speaks about. It's amazing and a lot at the same time. I'm so filled with joy what you and your family are doing. Gosh, it brings me joy that you're preaching the truth. Thank you for listening to our father. He's so good. I currently live in Beijing, China. I was studying American history online for my undergraduate degree and did not feel comfortable about what I was reading. I questioned everything. My classmate and friend is also staying in China for work. She told me everything a couple of days ago and told me how alone she felt for the past two years. I would like to stay in contact if that's okay. Shalom, my pastor. All glory to the Most High, my King, my Savior, my Redeemer, my Master, my everything. Praise report, pastor. I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. After your teaching yesterday, I went into praise and worship, and after a while, bam, I started speaking. I'm elated. I'm overjoyed. I cannot contain myself. Woo! After the teaching, went in and started praising and worshiping and received the Holy Spirit. Now, what are they going to do? We wasn't there to lay hands on them. There was nobody but her and the Father. And you better be careful because you listen to the wrong people. They will try to tell you that was the devil. And wasn't nobody there but her and the Father. Isn't that beautiful? Father know them that are his. The spirit took over and I could not stop myself from speaking. I had tears and snot flowing and I did not care. I feel like a new creature. I'm so grateful for your teachings, for the rebukes and getting on to us about doubt. I thank Yah for you. There's no one like you on the face of planet earth. I'll forever cherish the most high and his wonderful gift. I worked really hard for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I have met Yah's conditions. I'm his. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for my Heavenly Father. I'm extremely grateful to you. Hallelujah. The Spirit of Yah with you. I'm praying for you and glory to our King. Shalom, Brother Charles Dow. I'm connecting with you to encourage your work. I posted a comment on your video concerning Gentiles. I was spiritually edified by your work on that, brother. I came into the truth, I came into the truth under my Israelite camp, but have struggled with the very same scriptures you brought out. To teach and preach in any way to defame the Messiah is blasphemy, and it will not be accepted by Jesus Christ. I have great love for all my people, but I will not defame my Lord Jesus Christ knowingly, and I pray to never be in contempt of the Most High in any form. I preach these facts as well to all my entire family and those who will hear my teachings from the scriptures. You're doing a blessed work for Yah, and I pray his blessings be upon you and your congregation. I'm in North Carolina, retired military. I do travel, so one day it's my prayer to meet you and visit your congregation with my family. Pastor Dow, thank you for your powerful and sobering words tonight on Blog Talk. I pray for you daily that the Most High will contend with those who contend with you. Did you go into a new letter? I'm sorry, yes, sir. <clears throat> Boy, you moving, ain't you? Just trying to finish my stack. You're trying to finish your stack? If you don't stop me. I'm... This, this is not college exams. <laughs> slow down. I'll slow down. Y'all see how, did y'all pick that up? Rolling. He said, I'm trying to finish my stack. Come on, Sister Ashley. Thank you for your powerful and sobering words tonight on Blog Talk. I pray for you daily that the Most High will contend with you against those who contend with you. I also pray that the Most High will knit my soul to yours that I may never depart from the truth. Hey, do y'all know that if y'all were in the same position I was, and if you had any integrity of heart, you'll preach the same way? Your, your, your application may be a little bit different, but the word is still going to be the same. Ain't nobody getting by. That's just the truth. Ain't no nobody's getting by. 
So why sit up there and despise? Come on. As the faithful woman stood by the Messiah while he was impelled on the tree and stood waiting by his tomb, through the ups and the downs, I stand with you and straightway truth. I follow your strength as you follow the Messiah. Shalom, your sister. Keep going. Next. Dear Pastor Dow, in a modern age of mistrust, scrutiny, and spying on the common man, I think it's wise to send letters in writing and forsake electronic means and return to the old ways of being. I'm a writer at heart anyway, and it is the manner in which the gospel is written. So to task, brother, and the truth. I stumbled upon your channel some weeks ago while desperately seeking a brother who understood the way that I do. I've known for a long time of what is to come. Maybe I've always known, but I'm certain of this, that you are doing the right thing. There are many, many times you could say that I have had matrix moments, but all of them have led me to the current time and place I find myself in now. I've not seen all your videos, and I don't yet understand all the things you say. You are being hated, and I find criticism over the internet about the wickedness of your cult, but I say to you, this is a good thing. If you're being hated, you're getting results. If people try to defile you, you're in the right place. I know that no man is perfect in himself, and even in the righteousness of Christ, I have sinned in the past when I should have known better. The secret is to have no secrets, to confess everything, James 5.16. This has, however, proved impossible to practice with church around me, where I find deadly dim dominance for leaders, fearful weak tax collecting pastors, and where the women have more balls than the men. I believe that the Lord would have me to say to you that you have made idols of the law, the Old Testament, James 2.10, and we both should be careful of doing so. Ah, scathing rebuke too, huh? Say, I have made an idol of the law. Well, well, well. Hey, y'all y'all didn't miss that, did you? Yes, sir. All right, man, he's doing pretty good. Then I get blasted. Keep reading. If we are to live by the law, we must live by the whole law and not in part. Now, what's happening right here? That's Christianity 101 coming out, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't that Christianity 101? So it's a good thing I don't take heed to all words that are spoken. Read on. I know that you have pain inside you, just as in me, that drives us to extreme opposites as we discover the truth by revelation, as we try to keep what we know. I know what it is to have been lied to, and that lies by the way of the world through the church that we should be kept in religion, but we are not kept in bondage, but in liberty. I pray that one day our paths will cross and that I might be able to meet with you, God willing, as we both have the heart of the Father for his people. May the grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua, keep you always. Amen. Please be discreet with my address, as I would also be with yours. And he gives you a recommended reading, as well as his address in Norfolk, England. Well, the world, what the Christian world calls liberty is meaning that you have a license to sin. <clears throat> That's what they call liberty. Uh, but the book tells us that the law is holy. And the commandment is holy. And it's just. And it's good. So if I made an idol out of that, then I'll, so I'll stand condemned. Go ahead. Shalom, Pastor. I want to thank you for the invitation to Passover this year. That means a lot to me and our family. Sister Candace also extended an invitation to caravan with them if we are able to make it. And we are considering it. I do know that... My husband and I would enjoy visiting at a time when we are able to visit more with the people that live there at Straightway, which may not be Passover. But we are also learning how to guard and honor the feast, and we could grow in that area by seeing how it is done there. So we are still considering. Thank you. Also want to share with you a conversation my husband and I had lately. On Shabbat, February the 7th, he asked me, quote, in public, if you were to adjust your shoe or pick up something on the ground, how would you do it? I thought about it, then showed him. I would squat down or bring my foot up to the opposite knee. He asked because he saw something strange while working. He was tending to a long, narrow landscape bed on a commercial property. There was a woman at the opposite end. There was no bus stop or common area for her to be waiting at, but she was there the entire time he worked on this landscape bed. Three times he glanced up while working, and all three times she was bent over, bent at the waist, reaching down to her shoe, rear end up in the air. Three times over, about 15, 20 minutes. Now, he has seen some crazy things while cleaning properties, everything from gang fights to boyfriend-girlfriend fights, dead cats, deer heads, condoms, and innumerable dirty diapers, both for babies and adults, all of which he has to clean up after. 
He's been approached by all kinds of people while cleaning parking lots at night, especially during the days he cleans the Walmart stores. I was curious what he thought was so strange about this. This woman had a head covering on. So we talked about how many women wear one as a fashion accessory rather than just a covering, and their clothing shows no signs of covering. This woman, however, had on a long denim skirt, and her actions were so contrary to what he would expect from a woman who covered herself in such a way. This conversation, this conversation stuck out in my mind because earlier that morning I'd been watching a Shabbat service for May 31st, 2014, The Holy Spirit, Part 8. Our internet connection does not do so well with live feeds, so I usually watch a past teaching on Shabbat. During that teaching, you bring up sisters and their clothings and their actions. At one point, you even cinch up your pants and turn tail to the camera, imitating how such sisters strut their stuff initially with their rear end in the air. Having my husband ask me about this woman really made your teaching hit home. I'm usually initial of this type of thing in the area of modesty, and some women are very initial and intentional and in the opposite direction. I even go so far as to make sure that when I wear a when I hear a car coming down the road, if I'm working in the front garden at that time, I make sure I squat. I do, I do not want to be the lady who works in her garden with her ass up in the air, especially when most of the traffic is men working on the old rig road anyway. I must say that since listening to your teachings, I have never had so much to consider, nor have I ever had so much opposition to stand against. But I also know that I have never been more prepared or better equipped with the truth and righteousness that Yah provides to those who call upon him. Thank you for all you do, and thank you to all of Straightway. Next. Shalom, shalom, Pastor Dow. I just had the opportunity to watch your teachings on polygyny on Straightway Tech Team. I really appreciated the teachings because I lacked the understanding from the way that I had been taught my whole life. This was also shown to me to be barbaric. I remember the story about David, Uriah the Hittite, and Bathsheba, but but I did not remember what the Most High said to David. This was exactly what I needed to hear. Now, my understanding of polygyny is clear, and that blockage has been removed. I have been enjoying your teaching so much, the word comes forth from you like a two-edged sword, just like the Bible says, and that is what it takes to cut away the sin of bondage. Most of us Israelites are still in bondage, and we are not even aware of it. I need your teachings to be set free. Thank you, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise Yah, praise Yah, shalom. And that's the same sister as the first letter. Well, you all out, ain't you? You got no. like you don't preach a sermon now, ain't you? No, sir, I was just skipping a lot of her praises. No, I'm talking about all the letters you didn't read. Oh, wore out? No, sir. That's a lot of reading. <laughs> Early, you try to get through with the stack. <laughs> Bless you. We're in a sad situation when truth has become controversial. Y'all understand? Uh Uh-oh, look at him looking.